like an astronaut in a what you know about rolling down in the deep. Hey y'all, welcome back to Astronaut. So we can relate luminosity, the intrinsic power of a star, to flux, the brightness we receive from a distance away. Sometimes when we talk about the brightness of stars, however, we don't use either of these terms. Instead, astronomers often classify stars according to the magnitude scale. The magnitude system is a scale which allows us to compare the brightness of various objects. There are two types of magnitudes we use to refer to a celestial object, apparent magnitude and absolute magnitude. On the apparent magnitude scale, we set the star Vega to zero. Somewhat counterintuitively, objects that are brighter than Vega have negative magnitudes, while stars that are dimmer than Vega have positive magnitudes. This logarithmic scale is set so that a decrease in five magnitude yields an object that is 100 times brighter than the first. That means that a difference of one magnitude corresponds to a brightness factor of 100 to the 1 5th power, or 2.512. The difference in apparent magnitudes can thus be related to each other by the following equation. The first magnitude minus the second magnitude equals 2.5 times the log of the ratio of fluxes. The sun, which is brighter than almost anything we see because it's the most luminous thing that's nearby, has an apparent magnitude of negative 26.7. Sirius, another star, has an apparent magnitude of negative 1.4. The moon has an apparent magnitude of negative 12.6. Those are just some objects for scale. Rigel, the blue supergiant at the foot of Orion, will eventually explode into a supernova with a predicted apparent magnitude of about negative 11. How bright, or dim, is that compared to the moon? Since the moon's apparent magnitude is smaller, the moon will appear brighter to us than this supernova explosion. Negative 11 minus negative 12.6 equals 1.6. So we can calculate 2.5 to the 1.6 power to find that the moon will appear about 4.4 times brighter than the exploding Rigel. Because apparent magnitude is based on flux, it varies according to the object's distance. To more accurately compare celestial objects with each other, we standardize the magnitude scale by defining an absolute magnitude, the magnitude the object would have if it were only 10 parsecs away. So the absolute magnitude is 2.5 times the log of the object's flux compared to what its flux would be at 10 parsecs away. We can then compare the apparent and absolute magnitudes with the following equation. Apparent magnitude minus the absolute magnitude equals 2.5 times the log of the distance over 10 squared, or 5 times the log of d over 10, where d is the distance to the star in parsecs. This equation is famously known as the distance modulus. Let's apply the distance modulus to the supernova explosion we mentioned earlier. Rigel is 265 parsecs away. When it sets off into a supernova with an apparent magnitude of negative 11, the exploding Rigel will have what absolute magnitude? We can rewrite the distance modulus in terms of the absolute magnitude so that m equals little m, minus 5 times the log over d over 10. If we plug in negative 11 and 265, we get an absolute magnitude of about negative 18 for that supernova explosion. Because absolute magnitude sets all objects to a fixed distance, we can think of absolute magnitude in terms of a ratio of luminosities. In other words, m1 minus m2 equals 2.5 times log of the ratio of luminosities. This is actually the absolute bolometric magnitude. Radiation can be detected in multiple wavelengths. We'll talk about that more later, but for now you should know that when we point a telescope at an object in the sky and take an image, we take it in a particular wavelength range. The absolute bolometric magnitude accounts for the absolute magnitude in all wavelengths. Okay, so just to review, the apparent magnitude is derived from a ratio of fluxes. The absolute magnitude is what the flux of an object would be at a fixed distance, 10 parsecs. We can convert between apparent and absolute magnitudes using the distance modulus. And the absolute bolometric magnitude is derived from a ratio of luminosities. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and feel free to check out more videos on my channel for astro related content.